There are a ton of iPad drawing apps, so which one is the best? That's what we're talking about today. These apps are my personal favorites. It's just my opinion, which means if you disagree, you're wrong. You're dead wrong, and I hope you twist your ankle and fall in a hole. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Point is, there's a lot of iPad drawing apps out there. I wanted to narrow it down to a solid five, so let's roll this list. Number five, Affinity Photo. What? How is Affinity Photo only number five? Impossible, it should be higher. Yeah, yeah, a, a lot of people love this app, and, and I totally get it. This is probably the most robust app on this list. Affinity Photo started life as a Photoshop alternative over on desktop computers, and the iPad version takes everything in those desktop programs and squeezes it down onto the iPad. They've also streamlined a lot of the tools and the palettes to take advantage of the iPad's touchscreen. So for example, when you select a brush, it brings up all the options along the bottom of the screen for that brush. And of course, it brings in a lot of the touch gestures and things you're used to on the iPad that make the iPad fun to draw on to begin with. Plus, with this app, if you need type, you've got it here. If you need some vector shapes, that's here too. There's also a bunch of photo exposure tools and things like that. In fact, I would say a Affinity Photo is really geared more towards photographers, but it's still a pretty good drawing tool just because of everything they give you. And really, that's why it comes down to number five for me. I'm only using about 10% of the features, so there's a lot of stuff here that just more or less gets in my way. It's extra stuff. A lot of people want those things, or a lot of people need those things, and for those people, this is a great app. That brings us to number four, Autodesk Sketchbook. Okay, disclaimer, Sketchbook might not be number four in terms of the best out there, but the reason I'm putting it on this list is because now it is free. And for a free app, this thing is pretty darn good. It could do a lot. Tons of different brushes and drawing tools. You want markers, pens, brushes, pencils, all that stuff, it's here. And Sketchbook has been around for a while. There are a lot of artists knocking out killer work using this program. So we're talking about a no compromises app that costs nothing. One thing I didn't like about Sketchbook when I first started using it, and that is a setting. It is called Pixel Preview. It's probably a performance thing, but Sketchbook, by default, artificially blurs your pixels when you zoom in. This really bugged me, and I didn't know that this was something that I could toggle off in the preferences early on, but it is in there. And I find that if I'm drawing on an iPad Pro, performance really isn't an issue. But anyway, for a free program, like I said, whoa, this is a good one. Okay, time to move on to number three. But first, my sponsor. It's me, I'm, I'm the sponsor here. If you're looking to learn a new drawing program or dive into digital art, check out some of my tutorials. These are long form tutorials and they're project-based tutorials. So the idea is, is to get you drawing. So not only are you gonna be learning the software, but you're gonna be learning tips and techniques that illustrators use to create their art along the way. I learned from getting my hands on something and actually doing, so that's how these tutorials are designed, to get you creating art in the program as you go. And it's all done using my unique teaching style. You stay in your hole. Where were we? Number three, AstroPad. It's not exactly a drawing program, at least not the way the others on this list are. AstroPad mirrors your max display, and then you can draw on your iPad, kind of like as if it was a Wacom Cintiq. So you can use Photoshop or Illustrator or any of those other desktop programs right there on your iPad, and it works shockingly well. When you first hear the concept, you think it's gonna be laggy or weird or the brush pressure sensitivity just isn't gonna be right, but it's not. It's it's really speedy. It works exceptionally well, even on the newer, inexpensive iPads, the ones that now work with the Apple Pencil. Comes in two flavors. There's the standard edition, which is a one-time fee, and there's the pro edition, which is an annual fee. The pro edition comes with a lot of cool features. Maybe we're checking out for you, maybe not, you know, but take a look at those. There is a catch here, and that is this is Mac only. So if you have a Windows computer, you can't use AstroPad. There are two Astro pad like apps out there for Windows. One is called Easy Canvas and the other is called Duet Display. Now, full disclosure, I've had mixed results with both of those with testing. It's entirely possible it's because of the Windows computer I'm using is just not strong enough to run them well. I've had a lot of commenters on some of the videos where I've tested these out saying they haven't had the same problems. So there are demos for those. Make sure you check those demos out for Easy Canvas and Duet Display before diving in head first. We're at number two already. Can you believe it? Me neither. Let's talk about Clip Studio. Clip Studio has been one of my favorite desktop programs for years. Last fall, they rolled out their new iPad version. It is a pixel by pixel recreation of the desktop app we know and love. So this is good and bad. It's good, even great, because you have everything here, a real desktop app 
on your iPad. So the negative side of that is some parts of the interface could use a rethinking, or they're just a little bit small, especially if you're touching with your finger. You're definitely gonna want an Apple Pencil when you're using this. Some of the elements of the interface could use some rethinking the way Affinity Photo has rethought elements of their interface. Unlike Affinity, which feels at times like just a photo editing app you can draw in, Clip Studio is just for drawing. That's why it gets the number two spot on this list. Now, if you're a beginner, it is a big program with a lot of things in it. It can seem intimidating. The good news here is there are a ton of tutorials out there, and many of those tutorials were created for the desktop app. Well, they apply equally to the iPad app since they're the same app. Now, when Clip Studio first came out, it had a steep $9 a month price tag to it, but that's been reduced to a very reasonable $24 a year, at least for the standard EX edition. The standard version is the version I use. I've never had a need for those larger versions. Those are for people who are creating full comic books, not just page by page illustrations. Which brings us to our number one. This is probably no surprise to anybody who has been subscribed to this channel for a while because I love Procreate. I probably talk about it too much, and I know that I've completely forgotten that that word, Procreate, means something radically different outside of the art community. So why do I like it so much? It is the only drawing app on this list, not counting AstroPad, because that's a little different, that started as an iPad app and only as an iPad app. So what does that mean? It is designed from the ground up to take advantage of everything the iPad does. So when they were thinking about the design, they were only thinking about it in terms of the iPad. So other apps at times feel like they're trying to take their desktop features and find a place for them within the interface, whereas Procreate is just really streamlined just for drawing and just for painting. And it works well, because what do you spend most of your time doing in a drawing app? You're using a brush, you're changing that brush's size, you're changing that brush's opacity, you're changing color a lot, maybe you're erasing or blending. Those are the tools you see front and center in the interface. All that other stuff fades to the back, but don't let that fool you. There are still a ton of features tucked away in this app, like dragging a color to fill it in or being able to edit a line once you've laid it down. So what's the downside? There's gotta be some downside, right? Well, for me, it does everything I need it to do, but for a lot of folks, it's missing things. Shapes, especially vector shapes, like other drawing programs have, it's not found here. Some people have found a way to use brushes to get perfect circles or squares and those sort of things, but that's really a workaround. Same thing with gradients. It can be created with a brush, but it's not native to the program. It also has no text tools. That's something that a lot of people really miss. But overall, Procreate is a young program, and every year they roll out a new version and they're adding more and more features as they go. So who knows? Maybe we'll see some of that stuff down the road. Right now, it only costs $10 in the US. That is a steal. So there's my list. Did I miss your favorite? There's a pretty good chance I did. So if I missed your favorite, let me know down in the comments below, or if you have something to add, you can always add that down below. If you're new to the iPad or digital art, subscribe. You'll get more tips, tutorials, even some animations. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it, and I'm gonna see you in a couple of days.